Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Just about an hour ago, the South Korean exchange BitThumb was hacked. So this is their actual tweet. Notice for the suspension of all deposits and withdrawal service, uh, we checked that some of the cryptocurrencies valued about 30 million US dollars was stolen and those stolen cryptocurrencies will be covered from BitThumb and all of assets are being transferred to Cold Wallet. Yeah, I'm so sorry for everybody who's been affected. I absolutely know that when the coin check hack took place here, uh, everybody, even though coin check said that, don't worry, we're going to cover those losses. Um, it took more than two months to sort everything out and everybody was so anxious because the entire site was frozen and nobody could move any of their coins. So I'm absolutely positive there are a lot of people who are really, really going through a tough time right now. And that leads me right perfectly into the next story. So the Nikkei, which is the number one financial uh, network or reporter here in Japan, is came out with a story today that Japan's cryptocurrency industry drafts self-policing rules. And the proposed uh, bans include insider trading and highly anonymous currencies. So they have a document of which they've drawn up that's 100 pages long. They're going to make the announcement of the details next week on Wednesday the 27th. Uh, I think we are all going to be on pins and needles until we see the details. However, uh, I am absolutely sure that this self-regulatory body, which may, is made up of 16 people from the license exchanges, they are doing it in the best interest of keeping this space safe. And why does it matter to you who do, don't live in Japan? Because on situations like today with BitThumb, there are going to be more and more exchanges around the world that are looking to Japan as a model to keep their cryptocurrency exchanges safe. And so I think whatever uh, Japan adopts, I think you're going to see some of those same adoptions go out around worldwide. And also, too, you know, Japan is part of the G20, actually they're part of the G7. When the G20 and the G G7 meet uh, to talk about things like anti-money laundering um, global efforts, um, Japan is getting to be a very loud voice, and this is the voice that comes from um, the experience it had with the coin check hack and the Mt. Gox hack. So I think people are looking to Japan for um, regulatory framework, and I just don't doubt that you're going to see some of the same things that are adopted here are going to be adopted in your country as well. This is the actual picture of the faces behind that regulatory body. And yeah, I don't know, the picture is kind of interesting. It speaks for itself, but it definitely is showing a gesture of solidarity. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you what the um, faces look like behind this regulatory group. This is their website. It's one page. That's it. Uh, so you see the JVCA. This is the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association. And it is the Nihon Kaso Suka Kokan Gyo Kyokai. And it's a mouthful. Uh, it tells you here that just stay in touch. Um, they will update you on any changes and you can come down here and this is the Sekain and this is the regular members and you can see uh, gosh you've got Bitflyer, you've got Bitbank, you've got SBI, GMO, um, Bittrade, Bitbox, Bitpoint uh, and then this one oh yeah DMN uh, which is a big one and then this is the one I really wanted to highlight this is a Bito Argo. So Bit Argo is the company 
that just recently received a 40% uh, purchase by Yahoo. This is the exchange I want everyone to pay attention to because I think this is the exchange that when it goes live with the Yahoo brand, it's going to be a real success and it's going to be very big. Okay. All right. Everybody's talking about Tron. Um, I'm not going to rehash over their particular story as to what it is they're doing, because I think there's enough people covering that news, as you know, that um, they are going to launch their um, Odyssey 2.0, which is going to allow them to be on their own blockchain. And they are relying on uh, exchanges to actually do that token migration or swap, if you will. So there are billions at stake when we do these swaps. And, um, you know, I think uh, in this case, they're going off the Ethereum um, blockchain and they are going to use their own blockchain. So uh, EOS just um, attempted their migration. But this is the whole point I want to bring up in this particular website is Crunchbase. Crunchbase will tell you a lot about the um, marketplace and especially when it comes to acquisitions. So if you remember, um, there was rumor that Tron was going to buy BitTorrent and actually that became official. The announcement became official on the 19th of June, which for all of you was today, but it was my yesterday. Um, this is a place where you can actually look at the details of the acquisitions. So if you go to Crunchbase and you are wanting to check on your company or coin that you follow, you can see it, if they have um, done any acquisitions. So. For example, if we just go down to, I'm not searching on a particular company, but if we just go down to the um, overall acquisitions, I found one today that I didn't even know about. Here's the, here's the one Microsoft that acquired GitHub, which was such big news just a few days ago. But PayPal just did an acquisition that I didn't know about. There's Rock 10. Rock 10 is the Amazon of Japan. Um, where are you, PayPal? I did see it earlier today. Um, well, not that here it is right here. So they just acquired Jetlore. And if you don't know who Jetlore is, you can see that they are um, an AI stronghold in re tail. So yeah, I, I think that's interesting. I'm, I'm really interested in how PayPal reinvents itself because um, eBay has announced that they are going to step back from using PayPal. And I just think that's um, going to really change their world. And I think they're going to need um, some reinvention. Okay, so anyway, Crunchbase is a really good source for you. If you want to get their um, pro services, you can do so for, I think it's like $29 a month. You know, maybe that's not for you, but if you want to get um, even more detailed information, they do have that as an option. So within the migration, I just wanted to tell you that there's a lot of sources out there that tell you what's being um, supportive of the actual migration. I think the best place to go is to the actual Tron website. And then you can really be sure if the exchange that you may have um, the tokens sitting on are going to be supported for the actual migration. Uh, yeah, so the Tron.network is the website you want to use for that. I wouldn't rely on any other second or third source out there. And, and it's getting very close because it's, the migration 
occurs between June 21st and June 25th. Um, so don't wait if you have not done that yet. Okay, I know all of you know that I love Crypto Compare, and uh, this is something that was absolutely, let me just give it a refresh here. I was so surprised I almost lost you. I was so surprised to see something. Well, of course, um, in terms of Bitcoin, 60% of all transactions are occurring in yen today, but that's not what I want to show you. Um, exchange um, BTC by volume. So I found something that I hadn't seen before, and this is Simex. And I thought to myself, Simex? What is Simex? I don't know what Simex is. I mean, they have 18% of the volume today within Bitcoin. So, here is the um, website for Simex. They are a digital assets exchange, they're an online international investing platform and you can invest alongside the professionals and beginners for as little as $10 in startup. And it's an early stage and growth business. And so from this explanation, I still could not understand what it is they do. Yeah, I just wonder, you know, sometimes these, these websites need to be really more direct and to the point. So I, I went a little bit further Aha! So, Simex is a Russian cryptocurrency exchange that also offers crowdfunding services. The main benefit of using Simex is that the support fiat currencies and convenient payment methods such as credit cards and bank wire. Besides its trading platform is a really nice and equipped with advanced features and trading fees charges charged are not high. So it goes on why uh, what we don't like about the exchange is its slow transaction speed and low trading volumes. Besides, it charges comparatively high fiat transfer fees. So Simex services are provided by Simex Inc., a U.S. entity, which is not a regulated financial service provider. The company also has a Russian representative, a Moscow-based company called Multiplay. So lack of regulation involves certain risks. So if you'd rather use a licensed firm, we remind you that you can also trade in Bitcoin and other digital assets with Forex brokers, many of which are regulated. So yeah, I have to tell you, I just didn't know about this. when we go to the website i so they're, they're they're really they all they operate as kind of a crowd funding site and what i saw okay here are the projects oh my gosh so the projects that are showing up are all in russian except for this book translation has some English. Well, anyway, I just think that there is just so much going on in this space. It's hard to keep up with it all. All right, last, I wanna take you to an article that just came out within how long ago now? I think, what, 26 minutes ago? And it's true for tulips, junk bonds, and mortgage-backed securities, and now crypto, the big shakeup happening in the ICO market, and it should keep investors up at night. Well, I'm not one to spread any FUD, and, but this particular article is a little bit on the FUD side. So Chris Concannon, president and CEO of Bats Global Markets, he is also, keep in mind, he is the president of the CBOE. And the CBOE, as you know, is the Chicago uh, Board of Options. 
an exchange. It's the second largest exchange in the United States. It started in 1973. So this veteran trader said that if such offerings are deemed as unregistered securities, then the SEC will go after industry participants and litigation will rise. Crypto startups have raised billions of dollars via the fundraising method. And he is the president of CBOE Global Markets, is one of Wall Street's biggest crypto advocates. So he's a pro guy, but the trading veteran thinks investors, investors should lay awake at night worrying about the uncertainty hanging over the market for initial coin offerings, the popular crypto crowdfunding method. Uh, the reckoning will come in two waves, he says. Uh, this was an interview with the Business Insider. First, the SEC will go after the ICO market participants, then class action lawsuits against the teams behind the ICO projects will surge. Crypto investors cheered when William Hinman, the CEO, the SEC's Director of Corporate Finance, said last week that Ether transactions would not fall under the agency's regulatory purview. Still, Hinman's remarks did not give the green light for companies to run an ICO, which enables a company to issue its own token in exchange for either or for Ether or Bitcoin, which ideally would go towards building a product or business. So this kind of goes on and it is something that I want everyone to read because of who is um, being quoted here in this Business Insider uh, article. There's just a lot of speculation out there and there's a lot of uh, armchair uh, experts that all have been saying uh, this way and that way, but I think we need to really pay attention to those people who are on the inside, and this guy is definitely on the inside. So Chris Concanon is the president and chief operating officer of CBOE Global Markets, joining the firm in 2017 as a part of BATS Global Market Acquisition. He's responsible for CBO's trading business, U.S. and European equities, U.S. options, global foreign exchange and futures, as well as the technology operations, risk and marketing. Uh, absolutely, um, I think we need to sit up and listen to what he says. All right, that's enough of the serious stuff. Now on to the fluff. Japan won the game last night against Colombia in the uh, World Cup soccer tournament. So the Samurai Blue fans kick up a ruckus at Japan's Colombia viewing event. So the new trend here in Japan for lots of different events are to gather people in uh, venues and then they will show it on a screen and everybody can uh, cheer together in one big collective group. It's kind of, um, yeah, it's what's happening. So people last night uh, gathered in the Tokyo Dome. I think there were 11,000 people who gathered. And, but even bigger than that, I think, were the people who gathered on the streets of Tokyo, especially in Shibuya, which is uh, an amazing place because, let me show you a picture. This is the Shibuya Crossing, and the crossing has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ways to cross, and it is the world's largest pedestrian crossing in the world. On an, just a normal day, there are about 2,500 people that cross uh, at each turn of the light. So last night, no doubt, even if you double that, that's 5,000 in, in just the crossing. And then with the surrounding areas, I think more people were in Shibuya than were actually in the Tacoma Dome. Some of the um, footage in the videos are just crazy. 
So the Japanese felt very happy last night, and uh, I think it was a great game. Sorry, Colombia, but I thoroughly enjoyed the outcome. Okay, everybody, that's all I have for you today. It, some tough news uh, with the article from Business Insider and with the Bitcom, Bitthumb hack. So I hope that I can give you some better news tomorrow. All right, take care, everyone. Sayonara for now. I'm actually off to Shibuya. I'm going to meet my friend who is a miner of MonaCoin, and we love to sit and have coffee. He actually moved out to the country so he could mine because it's really difficult because of the noise to mine in Tokyo. So he's moved out to the country, and he comes into the city every couple of weeks. Then we get together, and we hang out actually in this picture here. Uh, to my lower uh, left, we have a coffee shop that we like to sit at and we watch the people go by, feel the energy of Shibuya, which is really lively, and we talk about cryptocurrency. So let me go chit chat with him and hear what the latest is, and I wish you all the very best, okay? Take care. Bye bye.